MMA Fight Corner. Yeah. Well, and, and here's the thing, uh, Chitty, and this this is probably going to work out uh, great for you. We give what we call the MMA Fight Corner bump. Ye- generally, when guys come on to the show here, their next step is to a, a main card on the UFC. If you're fighting an RFA, your next stop after this show, literally after this show, is the UFC. We had Mike you Biggie Rhodes on before his you're title right. fight at uh, at RFA. His next stop, UFC. So yeah. this will probably be the last time you're actually going to fight an <laughs> RFA. You're going to do something super dominant here. Uh, and you're fighting a, a gentleman here. And, and help me out here because I'm going through a couple of different. Who are you fighting in this fight? Chris Heatherly. Chris, Chris Heatherly. I just, I need to yeah, jump, cool. jump the gun on <laughs> <laughs> And uh, what do you know about Chris Heatherly? Have you, have you studied much tape on Chris uh, or have you have you talked to a lot of people are you fighting somebody similar to him tell me a little bit about Chris um I don't study a lot of tape at all okay I, I don't like doing that for some reason but um he is a Greco-Roman wrestler he's he's tough he's a he's a strong guy I know he's gonna be pretty strong he's uh he fought uh, Dakota Cochran and he actually tapped him out and Dakota Cochran wow. was pretty good himself, yeah so. absolutely yeah, he's in that main event here of this card with Efren Escudero yeah that's so, right yeah pretty good guy you know and you talk about not really wanting to watch a lot of tape so from my assessment that means that you kind of would prefer to go out there and set ahead your own game plan as opposed to worrying about it and adjust within the the, within the fight did you say that yeah uh, i mean i'll I'll watch maybe a fight just to gauge how he fights and the whole game plan is is my coaches they they watch the fights and they they tell me what they want me to do and how he's going to do it and i just like to really worry about what i'm going to do i don't want to go in there too much thinking, okay, he's going to do this, he's going to do that. So, I mean, I, I just want to stick to my game plan and whatever happens, happens. You also, you know, last year you had a Muay Thai fight and then also an MMA fight. Uh, tell us a little bit about that year and, and, and how often you've done uh, Muay Thai fights and MMA, kind of mixing it up. Uh, I've, I've done it I've done it throughout my career since I've been in Vegas, especially. I've, I've, done, it, I've done it a lot, but um, I love Muay Thai to death. That's, that's, that's where my heart is, so I... I'd, I'd take a fight any day. Anytime you want me to take a Muay Thai fight, if I'm open, as long as I'm not signed to a big promotion, then I'm, I'm more than willing to do it. So, And I enjoy it. Like, um, I don't have to worry about getting taken down, so I can do a lot more moves that I don't wouldn't normally do in a fight. So, uh, But both of them, I mean, I love both of them. But Muay Thai, I, I'll... Hands down, I'll always go back. Well, let me ask you here, because we have Scott Kent on quite often from Lion Fight Promotions here, and the MMA Fight Quarter's done a ton with Lion Fight Promotions. If if Lion Fight ever got to the same level, let's just say as a Resurrection Fighting Alliance or even you know maybe a Bellator World Series of Fighting, would you consider a transfer full-time into Muay Thai? Because it sounds like the art of eight limbs is, is where your heart lies. Man, <laughs> I, it, it, it is a tough question. I know yeah, I'm putting you on the spot here, but I mean, let's just pontificate. Someday, Lion Fight becomes, uh, you know, really the worldwide Muay Thai promotion that it's definitely aiming to be. I mean, what an interesting opportunity that might be. Yeah. Well, there happens to be some people that know each other between those two, so that that might work out okay. Maybe, maybe. Yeah. Well, you know, speaking of that that Muay Thai background in MMA, I believe you have eight wins that are all by TKO or KO. So you definitely come in there with that power. And you had, I think, uh, one of your fights in the RFA ended from uh, low leg kicks, if I'm not mistaken. So it's something that you utilize pretty often in your fights. And uh, I know that you've won five of your last six. So how does that feel coming into this event with all that steam and momentum behind you? Um, I feel good. Uh, especially my last Muay Thai fight, I fought a really – I won the number one ranked opponent. So uh, – so, I mean, that boosted my confidence up pretty high. I, I didn't win the fight. It ended in a draw. But, I mean, I'm one of the only people that, that, that's ever done that before. So, I mean, I, that, that felt good. And that put me on a – not a pedestal, but it made me realize, like, I'm capable of doing the same thing that the number one guys are doing. So, that and then coming off all the wins and and uh, and then even just the training with the wrestlers that I have in my in my camp, that's, that's boosting me up a lot more too. So, I feel good. I, I got a lot of momentum coming into this fight. And – I'm just ready to get in there and, and put my hands on them. And, and what camp are you working out of mostly here? Because I know a lot of fighters in Vegas, they mix it up. They'll like go to syndicate for one thing. They yeah. go to extreme for another. You know, So yeah. I was just curious where you do the bulk of your training. My, my, I'm, I'm just based out of one kick mix and Sergio right. Pena's. But I, I go to syndicate and I do my conditioning with uh, Norm Turner. Okay. And um, but other than that, I'm, I'm just strictly one kicks and, uh, one kicks and Sergio's. 
Yeah, I was impressed with some of the evolution. I'm going to call it the evolution of Chitty that I seen out of you uh, against even in that that loss that you had uh, against Jeremy Kimball. You were you were mixing it up on the ground. You were going after him. I, I got I got little moves. I got a couple of secrets that no one knows about. Yeah. So do you feel that sometimes a, a, a benefit to you might be that people underestimate your ground game and they yeah. see you just as a Muay Thai fighter? Oh, big time. I got that one uh, submission. I think it was because the guy. Yeah. Uh, yeah, his camp was telling my camp, like, oh, he's just going to choke him out. He's going to come out there and he's just going to choke him out in the first round. And I choked him out in the first round. I actually put him to sleep. And not because I'm good or nothing, but I just think that they underestimated me that he didn't expect it. He didn't see it coming, and I just caught him off guard. Yeah, to put him on notice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> let them know I got some jujitsu. It, it's, it's, like, it's like the John Jones chip on the shoulder here. He's just like, what, no wrestling? Okay, we'll see how that goes. We'll see how that goes. And, and, and Chitty, you know, when you look at – Fighters, I mean, you you mentioned it uh, just a little bit earlier here that you don't necessarily watch all the tape. You leave that up to your coaches. And Heidi brought up an interesting point with, you know, maybe some people underestimating you. If you do uh, not give your opponents a lot of tape on some of these things that maybe you're working on, do you think you're uh, more able to easily exploit that once you get into the ring, the cage, et cetera? Yeah. I mean, I, I, I think so. I, I don't um yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think so. All right. And Chitty, let me ask you, I mean, a lot of guys, you know, they say, oh, I don't like to watch myself when it comes back. Like, Come on, man, be real with me. When you when your fight comes out and you get to, you get to watch that again, you watch it, right? You, you, like, you like to see how they talk about you during the fight, <laughs> uh-huh. you know, what the announcers are saying, how you looked out there. You're like, man, I am looking really cut up. This is fantastic. Yo, watch out for that one. Tell me, I mean, is that still something... That you know, as you're sitting here with us on the radio, you got an access TV special. Does this ever kind of blow you away a little bit that that you've gotten this far in your career? Yeah, yeah. And um, at the same time though, I, I don't really look at it as I've gotten very far at all. But what makes me, uh, what really blows me away is how other people treat me. Like, like, like I've actually gotten somewhere. I'm like, man, like I feel like I'm hey, from- hey, yeah, you go with it. You know <laughs> what I mean? You're like, wow. I get to go right up to the front of the line at the DMV yeah. and stuff like that. That's what I knew that I made it. If I can cheat at the DMV, all right, you're doing pretty good. So, uh, well, that's that's awesome. And you're right. I mean, you you definitely don't want to consider this as the ceiling. Uh, there's there's definitely room for you to grow. You're still a very young guy. And Resurrection Fighting Alliance, the the company that you fought four times with it, and obviously going to be fighting some more here with your new contract is looking like the official feeder league to the UFC. So I'm sure your people, the folks that are surrounding you, your coaches, your, your, your handlers, your managers, and folks dealing with your sponsorships have got to be very excited about where you are positionally, especially going forward. Yeah, yeah. Um, we try not to look at the future too much because then you uh, get caught up in the moment and – I yeah, don't know, you good point for yep. fights or something. Absolutely, yeah, you, don't wanna, so, you don't want to. You don't want to look and look past target, your next appointment. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but yeah. Uh, yeah, we have we all got it in the back of our minds. We know what this league can do for us, and uh, we're really just banking on just getting this win and just seeing where we go from there. Yeah. How excited would you to be to be in there with your brother Anthony? You know, See, he's a lightweight. Yeah, that would be dope, man. Just be able to be side by side. The last time we fought together, we were probably I might have been. Seven years old. <laughs> <laughs> In the backyard. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, most of our early, earlier fights were like on the same card. Oh, is that right? Yeah, like our earlier Muay Thai fights. Our first fight actually was um, we fought on the same card and we actually fought two other brothers. Which <laughs> Wow. Yeah, yeah. Wow. It's, it's, it's the, the, what was that double mint commercial? You know what I mean? You would have had these guys have they're beating the hell out of each other yeah. as opposed to riding bikes in tandem. Yeah. Well, that's, you know, that's really fun. And, you know, you look at too, again, you don't want to look too far past your next opponent, but... When you do, it's just like anything. You start a season of, of any kind, if it's football or basketball, you've got your eye on the prize. The championship is definitely out there. You can't yeah. sleep on anybody, but you've got your eye focused on the future. And, and when you look at where your brother is at and, and where you're at, I think that you're probably you're, you're poised for some big stuff, man. I'm hoping. Yeah, I think it's going to be. I think it's going to be a big future. And, you know, now the second time that I've gotten a chance to see you, and one of them was at another lion fight uh, promotion, all, all the way up with the MMA fight corner bump. Absolutely. Fang, yeah. he's going to the UFC, going to be a champ, and then you're going to be interviewing. Like, you remember when we told you about that bump? <laughs> and it was true. I would have you treaty any time. Any time. He's an awesome person. I love having him in studio. Like you said, a friend of the show here. Been That's on right. a few times. I always appreciate your time. Uh, I did want to get back to your opponent, though, because you said you don't really watch a lot of tape. And, you know, he is a prospect coming up. He's 7-1. and one. So what are you expecting to really be the biggest challenge for you in this fight? Um, his wrestling. He's a he has a Greco-Roman background, so 
Um, I'm, I'm expecting to be defending off a lot of takedowns. And, uh, but I've worked with a lot of wrestlers, and uh, I'm prepared for whatever. He but can't. that's that's what I'm really feeling like he's, he's going to come out and do and try to either smother me on the cage and take me down from there or maybe even go for a shot. But uh, just his wrestling, that's, that's what I'm really, really thinking that he's going to aim to – I, I just had this vision of that if he's coming in to shoot up against you and he pushes you into that fence, that like he's going to eat a knee coming up. You know, so you got that hey. Muay Thai that clinches pretty good there. So, you great, know, great uh, about, uh-huh. right? so he, it's going to be like uh, Travis Brown and Josh Barnett where yeah. he's coming right in and boop. So, uh, you know, I just had that vision run through my head. I'm not trying to give away Chitty's game plan, y'all. This is just Heidi Fang's game plan. Yeah, that's all we're working on. Flying knees, flying knees, whole campus yeah. is flying knees. Yeah. So, you, know, you like we talked about, you have a lot of explosiveness in, in your style. Do you ever w- worry about uh, you know, if it goes into the later rounds or let's say it, – you don't have a five round fight, but if it were potentially a five round fight, do you condition and train yourself for for a, a potential twenty five minute fight or even you know fifteen minutes? How, how's your conditioning? Yeah, we yeah, uh, <laughs> my conditioning. Uh, I fight three rounds. We do five six rounds. He he, he pushed me no matter what, whether it's a, a five round fight or or just a two round sparring match or something. He's always constantly pushing me and pushing me so. Um, uh, later rounds, I'm not, I'm not really worried about the later rounds. Hopefully he doesn't get to that point. Hopefully I can take him out before then, but we're prepared for that anyways. MMA Fight Corner.